Hi. Um, I've been putting this off because um, I don't know what to share about my progress. But it's uh, it's May, it's, and this uh, project, which is due for exhibition next April, so we've been doing lots of drawings. Um, I want to show you where I'm up to. Come on a tour. So um, this is the most recent thing I've been working on just last week. This is Monday, so I'm just back in the studio. It's uh, three stages of man. Um, first youthful protester stage, and then um, the middle money-making stage, and then this is Dublin Dennis, an old Preston character. So he's the man in his old age. Again, somewhat poverty-stricken. Um, this, I've got a photograph of a friend with, with two children, um, and she's become like this heroic mother figure. Um, and in this drawing, I combined her with a, a photograph of a part of Manchester that's quite rough looking, and so she's emerging from the darkness. Um, in this one, I'm trying out combining her with an image of a man sat in a truck so that he's kind of the male uh, male figure in the in the scenario um i've used that same image to create a photoshop collage hopefully uh, improving the composition slightly so these things, this is some of the images that are emerging. These drawings are based on a very famous photograph. I'll show you the photograph now. Of um, a, a bit of a tragedy, really. A lady and a child falling from a broken fire escape. This happened in Boston, Massachusetts. But it's such a dynamic image that the angles of the of the bodies and of the railings and things it just affected me so i looked into the whole story of it and and what's so powerful is that the lady died it wasn't actually her mother the child wasn't actually the child's mother but the lady died but, but she broke the fall for the child and the child survived and that became a powerful thought for me this is a drawing of lindsay my wife with Lennox, our youngest, lying on her. She's like this securing image. I was thinking about that child landing on the mother. Um, but anyway, this developed this drawing of Lennox. I just started with Lennox asleep. So then I added the, the falling mother, as it were, and, and the suggestion of the legs of the child. At the top. This is, I found um, photographs of some old paintings, and this is a photograph of an old painting just from a uh, newspaper of an actress. She looks so sad, so mournful, that I had to paint her, and so I've started to reinvestigate that image again. Um, so things are getting combined, like this is another old painting of a mother struggling with children. So I've started to redraw that again. Unfortunately, I don't have the original photograph when you have a copy of it. This is uh, this is a somewhat carefully measured drawing. These are the first drawings, <laughs> really bad proportions, but just, just looking at the image. Uh, this is the idea of a, um, a mother and then maybe some sort of oppressors around that she has to negotiate through um, so all these crazy images this is images of construction workers so from the male perspective now what what the men are up to um, and I have this idea of instead of them breaking up and moving blocks of concrete that they'll be moving Lego blocks 
I don't know why I feel that should be. This is a really crazy drawing. <laughs> Started with a drawing of my son held by my brother and then just replaced his head. Um, again, finding old paintings, these are photographs of old paintings, you realize that things that seem really current have actually been important to you for a long time. So I'm trying to um, completely revolutionize um, what I'm doing. And yet I'm really returning to, to themes inadvertently. This great letter from um, Sol LeWitt to Eva Hesse. Um, and she's got a kind of creative block and, and it's a really wonderful letter. It's read by Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. Um, she's talking about saying, what I'm doing is real nonsense. And he says, well, do more nonsense, do more crazy. Don't worry about being cool, just be uncool. Stop worrying about big, deep things. Just do it, just do. Um, what you're doing seems really good. Now try something really bad. Try to do the worst thing you can. Um, it doesn't need to conform to any particular idea. Just do it, just do it. Stop thinking and do it. But then he says, this is the part that really I feel applies to me. He says, I go through a similar process every so often. I have an agonizing reappraisal of my work and change everything as much as possible and hate everything I've done before and try to do something entirely different and better. So that's, that's how I feel like every couple of years, um, I just feel like completely dissatisfied with anything I've ever done and feel like I need to really tackle some big issue and, and really start all over again and start from the ground up. So that's, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Um, what it feels like I'm doing anyway, but in, in, uh, in doing that, I'm actually finding again, themes that were important to me a long time ago, which is, is kind of reassuring. Um, one of the themes is couples. So this drawing is based on just photographs that have been, and then this is an old painting. So it's a very similar kind of thing, but I don't deliberately revisit stuff. It's just that they happen to be on a similar theme of these couples in spaces. So this was done, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. Um, a little study of a couple in a domestic space, but not really interacting. And then I squash them together, so they're closer, almost like Walter Sickert. And here I'm trying out different tonal variations. Um, and then this is more recently, I extended the space on this side. And then this is a sort of semi-abstract composition based on this one to make it more dramatic. And, and I was thinking of, um, I don't know if you can find it now, but Dean Cornwell said this really fantastic thing about composition, that it's not simply about making nice shapes, but that, that it should be based on the story of what you're trying to tell. And so when I was doing this, I was, um, I was trying to say that they're connected, but disconnected. There's a kind of fracturing of the composition. And it really helped me because uh, composition is a big thing. And um, so that really helped me to see that composition can have a purpose. It's not just about making it look nice and organized, but it's about actually trying to convey the story through the composition. So that's a whole new challenge as well. Even, anyway, uh, there's other stuff to show you. Um, last thing I'll show you today is uh, the development of this idea, the people in the old folks' home. Here is, is uh, here they are. Here's the young girl playing the piano and the old man remembering his wife playing the piano and, and going towards her. And then uh, the, the setting of an old people's home based on, largely on memories of, of visiting my dad. Um, so there we are, that's what I'm up to. It's, it's crazy, it's disjointed, it's all over the place. Um, I've got a kind of deadline of the 21st of May. I had a chat with an artist friend and we kind of set ourselves goals. So this, this month was about just bringing in ideas, letting everything come in. 
and uh, then hopefully something will be made from it. Thank you.